Hi everybody, thank you for joining me. My name's Mark and as always it's good to be here in the den at Friendship Shaving. I hope you've been doing well this week. I've been asked today to talk about soreness and irritation on the neck area and that's going to be the focus of today's shave and it's quite appropriate really because Four or five days ago I shaved with my feather non-folding razor and it's left me with a little bit of soreness on this area of my neck and that is where I usually have my soreness and irritation. I've also been asked today to shave with a single edged razor. And I'm going to be shaving with my EverReady 1912. It was patented in 1912, but of course it was produced right up until the early 50s. A beautiful razor, so I'll be using that today. I've got my Frank shaving brush already lathered up. And today I'm going to be using my natural shaving cream because it's got some menthol in it and I'll explain why as we go through the video. Now of course preparation is very important before a shave and maybe, maybe it's something that a few of us skimp on especially if we're in a hurry in the morning perhaps you usually see me with a wet flannel and before I start recording I've washed my face and I've really made sure that my bristles are nice and wet and soft. A lot of guys like to shave when they've come out of a shower and I think primarily the reason for that is they get really good preparation both on their skin because it's clean and on their bristles because they are nice and soft and ready for a shave. Now I'm going to be using a pre-shave today. I don't always use a pre-shave but I do tend to if I have a little soreness. But generally, a pre-shave does add, if you can find one that you like, and that you think works for you, because the jury is out on that a little bit. I only have three pre-shaves that I like to use. But if you find one that you like, I'd encourage you to use it, especially if you are having a little bit of irritation and just see if it makes a difference for you. I'm just going to leave this on my face for a moment while I talk to you. Thankfully, I don't have very coarse Hair. but I know a lot of you guys out there do have extremely coarse hair and if you've got that on the neck which is the softest part that we have to shave I'm sure it must be very very difficult a lot of guys really do struggle with irritation particularly on the neck area and I think it's fair to say that a lot of it is caused by shaving against the grain or by shaving with a razor that's too aggressive and getting a little bit too close. As I say, we'll get onto that more as we go along. Now I'm using a lovely soft brush today and it leads me nicely into Something that I saw Chris Bailey mention over on IAM CDB the other day. He talked about brush burn. 
It's something that I've encountered and that I've mentioned before, although I must admit I didn't put it quite so succinctly as Chris did. But I do believe that if you have a brush, and this isn't one, I've gotten rid of all my synthetic brushes that have a great deal of backbone. But I do believe if you have a synthetic brush, particularly with a lot of backbone, and you're face lathering and splaying the brush, that can cause some irritation. It's something that I felt on that area where I have a problem. So it's just something to be aware of. These days I'm finding that bone lathering and painting my lather on is the way that I prefer to go. But if you are face lathering and you're finding that it feels a bit rough, maybe try it a different way and uh, just see how you go. I do think with these synthetic brushes, and as I say, all mine are pretty soft, but it is the tips of the brushes that are treated to make them very soft. Once you get past that, really, you're just rubbing crimped nylon into your face. So perhaps that's something to be aware of, something maybe you hadn't considered before. Of course, a lot of guys really like that. And I'm not saying you shouldn't do it at all, but you know, it's maybe something to be aware of. Now this menthol soap feels great. It's already numbing my skin. Now if you've watched me shave before, you'll probably have noticed that predominantly I do two passes in a downward direction and one pass in an upward direction, particularly on my neck. And it took me a long while To work out that the hair where I get my irritation down here grows in a different direction. I'd heard about mapping the growth of your facial hair. I'd heard that lots of times. But I assumed that I knew which way my facial hair grew and I uh, kept getting sore down here and when I eventually did map the growth of my hair I was quite surprised to find that the hair here grows that way. Um, the hair on the rest of my jaw coming down here grows in mostly a downward direction. What I found was that on this area I cannot shave against the grain, which for me is in that direction. It feels when I do that. As if the razor blade is getting underneath the hair and lifting the hair and there's a little bit of movement in that area of the neck 
And all of that is happening before before the hair is cut. So you can see I've shaved with the grain there by going in that direction. What I find if I did it against the grain, I had that feeling of the hair lifting and it just had like individual spots where my skin seemed to be cut. I'd uh, definitely ended it up with it razor bumps because the hair seemed to be cut underneath the level of the skin it seemed to be lifted up and cut and then when it all calmed down that hair grew and it was underneath the level of the skin it was getting little spots of infection um, the hair count form a little ball under the skin so it's something really to be aware of but I think maybe We need to differentiate between the neck and underneath the jewel. And I'll explain why in a moment. I think maybe a lot of guys have hair that underneath the jaw grows in generally a downward direction. Now that leads me to my Adam's apple and it's at this point where my growth starts to change here. And I know a lot of guys have hair that grows up until about that point where it meets the hair growing down. So along this line they get a real you know, a real meeting of uh, two different directions of hair growth. Now, if that's you, and you're not aware of it because you haven't mapped the growth on your face, then if you're going straight down, there'll be a point from here downwards where you're effectively going against the growth or against the grain. And it's worth bearing in mind that a lot of gentlemen cannot shave against the grain or even across the grain on their neck. So if you have continued difficulty, you know, it, it could be that that is going to apply to you and maybe that's just something you need to manage. You know, this is my favorite, one of my favorite soaps. This one from the uh, executive shaving is Cheapest Chips. It's absolutely lovely. I think on this part of your face, you know, you've got that underlying bone structure that you don't have on the neck. So I think, I think there's a lot more movement in the neck perhaps, and that skin seems softer perhaps because of that.
and maybe the one of the things that you could try is just stretching the skin slightly course I mentioned getting too close and that's usually the way with me but if you're using um, I haven't got it in here if you're using a razor with a large blade gap of course this very soft skin is just going to get more of the skin in the blade gap of the razor um, so it may be you know if you've got lots of different razors you can maybe try using a milder razor on your neck than you would use on your face. Maybe that would help you out. And I know there are gentlemen that do that. You know, this part of my skin, even when I've not got any soreness, it feels different here than like my skin up here. It feels more bumpy and generally it feels, you know, if I run my finger against the grain here, it feels more sensitive than if I run it against the grain here. Um, I've never known why that is. I probably never will. But what I do here, when you see me go upwards on this part of my neck, is I'm going across the grain. It took me a long time to be able to go in an upwards direction, because that's of course not necessarily against the grain. It took me a long time to be able to go in an upwards direction on my neck. For a long time I was just sort of shaming in a downward direction and every time I tried to go upwards it was like you know I could tell straight away and uh, I think to some extent my neck got used to the fact that I was shaving with uh, a safety razor rather than a cartridge. Now I'm shaving with cold water today, it's something I do most of the summer to be honest with you. And it is thought that cold water is particularly beneficial for helping stop irritation and soreness. Apart from the obvious chilling uh, on the skin, um, it does seem to be rather beneficial. Now, I am a fair weather shaver in that respect. When it's colder in the winter, I use lukewarm water. But these days I never use really hot water. I used to. Um, and I used to enjoy it. But I think I went too far. I got to the point where I was heating my flannel with hot water and I was putting it in the microwave so it was really really hot and then putting that on my skin of course I realized that I was just damaging the skin um, to exaggerate it slightly you wouldn't pour boiling water on your skin but the heat of my flannel coming out the microwave was practically up to that it was I got ridiculous with it
and um, I started showering with just lukewarm water and cold water. And that in itself definitely helped me. Beautiful. Oh, towels dropped on the floor. So I'd really love it if uh, you've had an issue with soreness on your neck. If you would leave a comment, please, because it would be really nice if the comment section of this video would be able to act as a resource so that anybody coming along that has issues that we're discussing uh, can, can sort of look for some of your comments. You know, what did you do that helped you? Now, actually, I'm sore enough there that I'm not going to go across the grain on that little bit today. And I'm just going to come in here and go with the grain again. You know, that's strange when I was shaving with that feather non folding razor, it didn't feel particularly sore when I shaved. It came on afterwards and uh, it wasn't really bad, it wasn't razor burn to you know a very bad degree but it stayed at a certain level and it just kind of never didn't go away very easily now i would think that if you're giving yourself a razor burn and having to go to work and wear a collar and a tie well that would be really really uncomfortable So the things I'm going to suggest might seem quite obvious, but perhaps, perhaps I'll say something and you'll think, oh yeah, I'm not doing that, or perhaps I'll just say something that will help you. I do hope so. So I would suggest proper preparation, especially, you know, don't skimp that if you're in a hurry. Um, Now that bit there, I'm going against the grain. It's only down here the direction changes. I would suggest mapping the growth of your hair and it's best to do that if you can not shave for a couple of days, maybe over the weekend if you work all week. Really have a good look in the mirror or have your partner help you and see which direction your hair grows and you, you may just find that in an area where you get particularly sore that's where the hair grows in a direction that you weren't quite expecting. Now of course it's very difficult if you have to shave for work but if you are able I would suggest shaving just in a downward direction or with the growth with the growth and try that for a week 
and just say if A, you get a good enough shave to carry you through the day. But more importantly, see if that irritation eases. Because if you're shaving with the grain and the irritation eases, it kind of suggests that the problem lies with going against the grain or across the grain. And then, you know, you can go from there, you can build up to doing, like myself, two in a downward direction and one in an upward direction or whatever suits you. But that's what I did for quite a while. Now, one thing you can get folliculitis and it is small little very red butts they are usually infected um, a five in one I have to go for another towel a five in one face wash helps with those um, because they usually contain some salis sal I can't think of the name basically aspirin and that really helps with that but I found that and they were really quite sort of touch I found mine were caused by using witch hazel which is why you never see me use witch hazel now I can use it in an aftershave but what I was doing and maybe it was the brand that I was using um, was getting some witch hazel in my hand just as an astringent and splashing it on and then pulling on my aftershave and it caused me to have this issue and it took me a long time to work out what that was. That is a slightly different problem from um, soreness on the neck but it all sort of added together to create this discomfort. But of course, that was everywhere. Now, of course, I'm going to suggest making sure that you use mild pressure on the neck. Just let the razor do the work. That's quite important. Maybe you don't need to stretch too far, you know, move, move your chin away. Um, you might just... In the area that you get sore find it beneficial just to pull the hair or pull the skin slightly and get a little bit of extra stretch there's no need to go mad but maybe that will help you perhaps trying a milder razor might help you um, I'm using my Allen block today and the reason I'm using that is firstly it's it acts as an astringent it pulls all the pores and close, closes them together but it also is, has antibacterial properties so if you're not using alum then maybe you should, particularly where you're getting irritation. And the good thing about alum is now I've got no issues today, no real stinginess. But if you have an area where you're getting really too close to the skin, you'll know when you put the alum on because it, it will really sting. Um, it's a good test you know a good alum block is really inexpensive you can pick them up practically anywhere and it's worth trying because you'll see the areas you'll feel the areas where you're too close because it'll hurt a little bit 
Now I'm going to leave the album on today. I normally rinse it off a little bit. I'm just going to leave it on today and wipe my face with my cloth. Now I'll explain the reason I used the menthol shaving cream today. And I'm going to use an aftershave balm with menthol in it is because menthol acts as an analgesic it acts as a pain reliever in other words and it counters irritation and it is antibacterial it does quite a lot of things that you wouldn't expect it's frozen peppermint oil frozen peppermint oil and I've done another video where I talked about the benefits of using menthol. And I'll put the link below. If you haven't seen it, please check that out. It's a wonderful product. Now, of course, if you're shaving too close or with a too aggressive razor, it's not going to cure that. But it will help with the after effects that that razor has caused you. So I'm just going to be using my Nivea Men Sensitive today, which has got witch hazel in it. Again, an astringent, and it's got the menthol. And it is really worthwhile looking out for an aftershave or an aftershave balm that has menthol in an awful lot of them do these days and it's, it's very worthwhile and I would also recommend just to finish this off if you've got a sore neck and it hurts you going in that direction put the balm on in that direction just be gentle with your skin where it's sore perhaps when you have a wet face and you're dabbing your face perhaps you might dab rather than scrubbing your face with the towel if you're like me <laughs> the towels are not that soft um, anyway i think i've got everything in um, just a final thing just thought of tea tree lavender neem they're all things that are antibacterial and very, very good for the skin and help with healing. So, got irritation, try using a soap with some of that in it. You could get tea tree oil and drop it in your fresh water in the sink to rinse with. Similarly, you could get some menthol drops or menthol crystals. and Well, you could drop some in your soap or you could drop some in your rinse water. All of that will help you out, but it's just a question of working through it, I'm afraid, and managing it as best you can. But hopefully, hopefully something I have said will resonate with you. And I wish you luck because it's, uh, it's not a very nice experience and uh, I hope you sort it out soon. That's my shave for this week. Look after yourselves and I'll see you next time around. Please subscribe and please let me know how you're doing and if you have a solution to soreness. Thanks everyone. Bye bye.